Welcome back to Interpreting Music. In part one of the episode, we listened to Mumbo Jumbo by Tierra Wack and talked about some of the production elements and some of the context for the song. In this part, we're going to take a closer look at the music and analyze some specific elements of the track. Let's let's get into some of the analysis, and we're going to listen to some of it, maybe all of it again, which will probably be edited out of the video. Um, but at the end of us listening through it, I'm going to ask Matt to sing Do, you know, to, to tell me what he thinks the, uh, or to sing what the tonal center is in his opinion. Okay, we just listened to most of the song. Matt, sing Do. I'm, I'm in a bit of a conundrum because I kind of <laughs> want to sing the da, but then I'm, I'm feeling like it rests more easily on the da of that kind of background. So the A natural instead of the B natural. Okay, so you're hearing. I'm very. Yeah, I feel like you know that B keeps coming back. It's hypermetrically emphasized. It keeps starting the riff over. But yeah. the A and what I'll tell you what's doing it for me with that that A as a resolution point is that the bass drops out on the downbeat of that second measure. So yeah. like that A becomes a lot more prominent than it is. Yeah. Um, so huh. I'm, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> probably so you're starting either to hearing, a bad one. But. You're hearing B, maybe A. I'm very yeah. excited by this answer, I just want to say. Um, and you'll, you'll see why. Um, yeah, I mean, I would be inclined to sing that B too, just because in general, the collection of notes kind of just, you know, after analyzing it, after listening to, to it so much, it does sort of hint at, B being sort of the pitch center, the home note, but um, there's a lot going on here that sort of draws us away from the B2. So I, mm-hmm. I want to talk about how the the pitched elements in the in the beat and in the vocal parts um, make this such a compelling song because obviously, like it's it's really interesting for all the reasons we discussed with her performance choices, but I want to talk about the the pitched elements as well so yeah let's talk about let's talk about the uh the sort of bell part in, in the beginning um which is what that, i was cueing in on with that yeah because that's the first that's the first note you yeah. hear right so that makes sense um so yeah that that um that's pretty pretty much ubiquitous the whole time it, it sort of um gets quiet at one spot but it's it's there the whole time so mm-hmm. um Let's just let's just kind of jot down some notes there. So I'm gonna just write bells for that for that sort of pitched percussiony kind of sound. Yeah, so that high synthesizer line then. Yeah, so we're getting B down to C sharp, up to D, up to A, G sharp, B, D. You know, we could say this is very clearly B Dorian, right? This is like a this collection, this melody gives us a B Dorian sound. So that just, just to be clear, then you're saying B Dorian because it's minorish with the D natural and it's got a raise six with the G right. sharp and raise six from minor. I mean, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is, um, this is definitely B Dorian, right? We can agree on that. This, mm-hmm. just this abstracted from the song is B Dorian. Right. So then, um, you say A possibly as an answer, and there's two reasons that that's really interesting. So the reason that A, the first reason that A, I think is also a worthy candidate for what is tonic is in the very beginning when she sings her little yups. So do it's going d a d so right off the bat huh. ag- against the the b dorian backdrop of the b she sings d down to a whoops i'm just going to put this up an octave for ease yeah. of reading <laughs> so d down to a and then so she does that once da do da it doesn't sound very hip without the beat, but you know, and then, <laughs> and then after that, two times in a row, she, she, she arpeggiates a D major chord. She goes, 
na na na. So we're huh. getting an arpeggiated D major chord over this B Dorian um, melody. So let's just listen to that once. And I think this is why it's you know saying ah, maybe A is the the tonal center. So you're you're hearing what would be you know the fifth scale degree, which is an important scale degree in in the major key, right? In D, we right, could just say right. we could just say D Ionian for now, since we're talking in Mode. terms of mode. So D Ionian, D major, same collection of notes. Let's listen to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So if if hmm. the if the synthesized bell part wasn't there at all, you would just say that's a D major triad with no other information. I'm saying this is in D major or this is a D Ionian melodic thing. Does she, does she not sing a C sharp? Am I crazy? When she when she switches to that low F, I, I'm pointing at my when she goes up that. to when she goes back up to um yeah that. Oh, Was maybe. A C or a C sharp. I mean, let's listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah da. I'm hearing yeah. a D. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I hear, I hear a slide. I do hear. Oh, okay, she yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. it that time too. Yeah. I mean, it's so here. If we want to be really. Uh, She's got like no. a grace note C sharp there or something. Yeah. yeah we'll, okay. We'll put a, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're right. It, it is, there is, I didn't hear that before. Um, that sounds well, cool. She's, and she's so like articulate on the first two, uh, the first two D yeah. pitches. Dun, she sings, right? It's like, done, done. Yeah, you're right. That's cool. So she's I almost tonicizing D then. She's like, cause I, cause with that C sharp leading tone, it's like, ah, oh, T do. Yes. Exactly. I didn't, and, and I didn't pick up on that when we, when we listened back to it again. Yeah. Um, so, just Which makes really it for quick. me that makes that a center a lot less likely to happen. Let let's keep going with down this this train of thought because um the next portion of the song where we could sort of call the verse, right? It is very much a D major pentatonic kind of melody that always lands down on A. <laughs> So you're getting, but you're only getting four notes of the pentatonic. Then, if I was hearing that correctly, yes, yep. So you're getting this sort of um, going around that F sharp E, and you're going down to D, mm -hmm. then down to A. So you're getting a very clear three, two, one in D, right, and then landing down on that A. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do this. I'm gonna put a little slash here. Okay, so yeah, definitely has pentatonic vibes, especially mm -hmm. I think when, when she comes in singing, uh, da -da -da, da -da 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 um, very cool, very pentatonic E. So, you know, th this is all kind of interesting, but there's nothing really clashing here chromatically. But when, when the bass does finally come in, we get this really cool hinting at some polymodality, having multiple modes happening simultaneously and juxtaposed. So if we listen to the moment when the bass comes in, we'll do that in a second, we're gonna hear a low G, natural, I'll put a natural in there, and that's gonna be sort of kind of cool and funky against, well, it's not happening at the same time as, as the G sharp in the bells part, but right. they are only separated by a measure. So you are getting this chromaticism, and I think that really adds to um, why I think this beat and this song in general is really compelling. Um, and then that goes down to an F sharp, and that sort of oscillates, and then at the end of the phrase, it goes down to an E. So based on all the so, notes... Wait, wait, just to be... So it yeah, goes go G, F sharp, then G, uh, then G, E? Is it, a, is it always a four-bar thing? Yeah, so it's like um, G, F sharp... G and then I think it goes yeah then yeah exactly so G F sharp okay. G E so I mean based on all the notes 
surrounding above or rather above the baseline we could call this maybe g we could call it g lydian maybe or we could just say right oh oh you're including all the notes above it yeah if we're including all the other notes because okay, because of the c sharp then okay yeah so it's like g major but with raised four with the c sharp gotcha right so right okay. now we're just we're gonna pretend that ignore g, that. that g sharp just doesn't <laughs> exist because you know, then you're getting into territory outside of the realm of um, sort diatonic of collection, diatonic yeah. jazz blues modes kind of thing, right? So um, what I'm hearing that as when that G comes in, I don't think it's appropriate to put chord symbols anywhere in the song because it's all counterpoint. But mm -hmm. if we paused the song at the moment where the, that low G first come in comes in and let all the pitched information sort of ring out, I'm hearing, you know, sort of a, a G, a G major seven sharp 11, right? So you're getting, we could just call it a G sharp 11 because the overall harmony with the first measure would be. You have the major seven in there and the sharp 11. You got your G, B, D, F sharp, and then C sharp. Right. So. Again, I don't think it's appropriate to put a chord symbol because of it, it's really all counterpoint. Remember how you talked about uh, maybe A is the tonal center. So on, uh, where I th it sounds like she's saying bury you, she's singing E, C sharp, A. So it still fits within the framework of D Ionian, but now it's outside of the framework of the pentatonic. So we could say that she's either completing the scale collection or she's changing the scale that she's using. But I think it's interesting that it's featured so prominently here. I think that lends itself to saying, well, this is in D. Like the, if nothing else, I think we can pretty confidently say that if her vocal part is in D, and in fact, you're getting a really cool sort of, you're getting the basic phrase model in her journey through the melodies. Because in the very beginning, you get this do, so, do, mm -hmm. right? And then in um, part of the verse, she adds in the B, so you get the B added there. And okay. then in this part, you get an arpeggiated five chord. So you're getting tonic predominant. You could say adding that B in there, you could put it, you could put a four chord in there, you could put a two chord in there. And then okay, you're getting, I think I see where you're going. So then so you're getting you, to the dominant, and then it, it sort of goes back to D. So, so the no guessing is is some sort of G. Right. The only thing we're missing here to say that, yes, this is definitely um, D major or D Ionian rather than maybe um, D Lydian. Lydian. Um, the only thing missing is a G or a G sharp, which there is a G sharp. In but there's the, also. Um, but there's also a G. G natural. So I think that, again, you know, I don't think there's. I think the answer is that this song is using really interesting polymodal counterpoint. And so that's part of what makes it so musically interesting to listen to and, and what makes it so compelling, aside from all the, you know, the, the metamusical, um, right, right. musical trying, yeah, analysis. Trying to unpack what she's actually saying. <laughs> yeah, just from a music, an abstract musical standpoint, it's, it's, it's so cool. Um, so again, you know, I, I want to emphasize that, you know, for anybody watching who is, um, you know, knows their, their Roman numerals, it, you could sort of say, okay, we kind of have a one, tonic and then he, and then later in the in the melodic stuff she does sing a b so we could say okay well maybe that's four or two or whatever you know predominant mm -hmm. and then we get to the dominant where we we do the five chord and then we go back to tonic so i think we do very clearly have at least so far at least two simultaneous modes occurring which is very cool and then you could also say three if we want to say that we have a G Lydian baseline. Well, before before I go on to, to th the thing oh. that really blew my mind about the song, <laughs> what, what other thoughts do you have about, you know, how this um, adds to the um, the listener's enjoyment, you know, maybe 
maybe it would well, not. Maybe people would go, oh, what's all this dissonance or something? <laughs> well, I think it's, it's one of these things where, like, you know, having talked about it and, you know, I mean, you know, we've come up with some things we didn't plan on discussing. I think going back and listening to it again is, is, is where the reward is, right? Like, we can say we can put all these labels on crap it's and true. Name, name everything. But then going back and listening to it, you know, as long as we're listening to it, like, critically and more and differently than we had the first time. Um, yeah. One thing while you were talking, um, since your cursor happens to be over that a natural in the next measure, which was, oh, you know, when mm-hmm. we first started discussing, I was like, that's, that's kind of like my second choice for tonic. You know, you get that G sharp immediately after. So even though it doesn't resolve back like do T do a G sharp a, that yeah. I think is one of the things that like, I kind of want to happen, but it doesn't. Yeah. Well, um, and, and you know, B Dorian is, you know, the, the same collection of notes as a major. So that's right. Yes. And, yeah. and that, yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah. I guess possibly reveals one of, you know, my in, entrained bias, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, definitely. But I, I think, I, I think you still can't. Um, well, again, it's just another factor at play in terms of what makes this kind of compelling. It's like, where is yeah. tonic? What is the, what is, you know, what are the notes I'm hearing and how do I deduce this? I, I this would be incredibly cruel to give to like my theory students, you know, <laughs> it's, it's mumbo jumbo. <laughs> It's kind so not, of yeah, so not only are the lyrics hard to understand, it's also hard to figure out where we are, uh, not necessarily maybe in a diatonic collection, but in terms of a pitch center, we've got like a lot of variables. Yeah, I, I think play. most people, well, no, I don't want to say that. I was going to say, I think most people would sing B, but I could probably be proven wrong pretty, pretty quickly. But, you know, uh, I think like G is a really of... compelling candidate, though, because of the low, it's the lowest pitch you hear. So, I mean, like, yep. You know, as a tuba player, bass player, I usually gravitate towards that low note. But so I want to get to one more thing um, oh. about this whole polymodal counterpoint thing. Up until a certain point in the song, you're getting juxtaposed chromaticism, you know, chromaticism um, separated by time, right? So you're getting you're a G about the G, G sharp? Yes. Otherwise, that's the only chromaticism, right? You're mm-hmm. the G and the G sharp, but they're separated by a measure. This changes because when, later in the song, when she sings, na, 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 she sings a G natural, a, oh. like an eighth note separated from the G sharp in the, in the bell part. So it's a a G sharp F sharp E or sorry A G F sharp E G. So yeah. So in this part of the B, where you have the G sharp, she comes in with A G F sharp. Da, 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 da. So you're getting in the voice, you get this A G descent down to E and then goes back up to F sharp. I got to put a natural here though, because we don't want to get confused. And then in the beat, you're still getting um, that A down to G sharp. So now, like I said before, up until this point, you were getting juxtaposed chromaticism. Now you're getting simultaneous mm-hmm. chromaticism. Um, and it's really cool that that this this part is sort of the really the melodic climax because she never sings higher than this and the way she's singing is so emphatic and it's going on with other vocal parts and you know the whole the whole beat is in it is the most dense it is the most um chromatic so i i just find that really cool that she sang a g natural basically at the same time as the G sharp, so cool. Okay, can we listen to that again now that we talked yeah, yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Keeps going.
And yeah, that's really cool. Furthermore, yeah, I wouldn't have noticed that unless you picked that out. Yo, I didn't notice it either until I started sort of roughly transcribing like everything. And then I went, wait a minute. <laughs> um, and what else is cool? I, I, this, I'm just now noticing this. She's singing that over the second bar of the loop. So there's an F sharp in the bass. <laughs> so let's add to this because she, we're getting, you know, basically a, a zero, one, two set here if we want to get really just over the top pedantic because this is the part of the loop. Uh, or of the baseline progression with the, oh, the F sharp, so we're getting okay. an F. We're getting an F, yeah. It's separated by by you know a big range, but we do have an F sharp in the bass. Mm -hmm. We have a G natural in the voice, and we have a G a G sharp. So very cool, very cool. Well, just what's really cool to me, I mean, so um, is the the way the kind of the vocals unfold, right? You start off with this pentatonic collection, mm -hmm. then you add that that leading tone c sharp but then you finally add that g at the very end and that yeah. kind of melismatic mm -hmm. um, motif so you've got kind of this you know if you want to do a big picture kind of hierarchical unfolding of of a pitch center you've got kind of this d, d major option right um you've got kind of this b dorian option which fits mostly with that d pentatonic idea mm -hmm. um it's not as there it's, it's almost like yeah so we're getting like the relative major relative minor uh, right kind of collections being emphasized and then you get this almost like the bass doesn't resolve where you want it to yeah because that e that e always goes back up to g it doesn't go down to d or yeah and it doesn't go and that f sharp doesn't go up to b ever so we don't get that sold do if we're thinking of b All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we hope that you listen to the song. And if you come to some different conclusions than us, let us know because there's a lot going on here, actually. It's not it's not a super simple song. Um, so please let us know how you feel about it. Yeah. Thanks for watching.